What's up tech, it's Josh here. In this video, I'm talking about the robotic mower made by Honda called Mimo. Mimo has been one of my favorite products that I have been able to review in a long time. It's something different, unique, that's just kind of outside of the smartphone realm. And it's just really nice to get a hold of a product that I truly, truly, really appreciate. It's been such a wonderful, great experience. This was provided to me for review, but I promise and assure you that these are my full and honest opinions. This is something that I've been excited about putting together because it's been a whole summer project. I really appreciate the fact that they wanted to have us do an initial unboxing, first impressions kind of thing, and then use it for the entire summer to see what the experience is like. So it's really, they're pushing for true and honest reviews because we have to use this thing for the whole summer. Mimo has actually benefited my quality of life and that's probably what I like about it the most. I wanna go over the top three features that I love about this and also go over some of the other notable features that I think that you would actually appreciate as well. First of all, this thing is a huge time saver. This thing saves me a ton of time working on the yard. Before Mimo, it would take me about an hour and a half to work on the yard when it was just mowing, weed eating, edging, and blowing off. If I had to do any kind of hedge trimming or anything like that, obviously it would take me some more time, but with Mimo, it cut that so much down. It takes me like 30 minutes to do the yard now because all I have to do is a little bit of push mowing, weed eating, and edging, and then of course blowing off. And to me, when I'm able to save that much time on the yard, I actually like doing yard work as something it's like an escape for me. It's something that I like doing. So I get to still do a little bit of it. I just like to get outside and work. It kind of gets me outside of being behind a desk or camera electronics, all that kind of stuff. But anyways, I really appreciate that it takes no time at all. I can wake up in the morning, knock out the yard in 30 minutes, and then go take my shower, all that kind of stuff. So it's just a huge time saver. That's a big deal to me because I'm a business owner. So time is money. When I'm able to spend time on the business or even spending time with my family, that makes a huge difference to me. So where I'm able to cut corners, pun intended, I'm really appreciative of those kind of things. So I, I really try to budget my time. I really try to find ways to where I can spend more quality time on my business or with my family. So Mimo has added that quality of life to my everyday life because of that. Another factor that I love about the time saving is that I don't have to spend as much time out in this heat it is super hot outside in the summer. I live in the Southeast United States in the tri-state area of Florida, Georgia, and Alabama. It gets excruciating hot. The humidity is just unbearable. We've had 100 degree days, four days, like and we've had no rain for a while. So it's just been really, really hot. Buddy Mike Casey that also has a Mimo, he lives in Central Florida and he's like, we have two seasons hot and hotter. And it's really no exception up here. I think we get maybe two or three weeks of some cooler weather. But outside of that, it's just, it's so hot outside. But speaking of seasons though, we've officially come to the end of summertime and it's officially fall. The grass has stopped growing to a degree. We've also had not much rain. So just kind of like the two factors alone, I've been able to slow down Nemo. It doesn't have to run as much. When it's full-time summer, full growth and all that, I'm running this thing about 40 hours a week. So it's running every single day. I've got it scheduled to be from about 10 o'clock to about three o'clock with a couple days to where I know I'm not around the house, scheduled about nine o'clock to about four o'clock. The reason why that kind of time framing is that with the South being the humidity that we have, the morning time still has a lot to do on the ground. So it's not necessarily the best conditions for Mima to run. So I'll let the, the ground kind of dry up a little bit and then it can start running. Even though that I work from home, we homeschool our kids and things like that, we're not necessarily out in the yard during this time period because we're working on school and my work. So those are the better times to even run it. I shut it off about three or four o'clock because that's the time where we might go outside, grill. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that rooster outside, but you can kind of tell that I'm in the South. It's just an ideal time to have that kind of schedule for myself. Although there was a point that I actually ran this thing at nighttime, which brings me to another point is that this thing is super quiet. You can run it at nighttime. So if you have a lot of activity going around the yard or if you have a business, that runs during the day and you got customers in and out or you got employees that are out and about, 
you don't want Mimo necessarily running around. So you can actually run this thing at nighttime because it's so quiet, it's battery operated, there's no gas powered engine or motor or anything like that. So it's really cool that you have those options to be able to run it at nighttime if you need to. So it's definitely ideal for those kind of setups if you need to have a kind of out of the way and not really shown in front of people, you have that option. Maybe one of my favorite things about Mimo is that my yard always looks fresh. It's always cut with the exception of the times where I need to weed eat and just clean up the perimeter of the property, I get compliments from my neighbors. And my male person actually stopped and like, does that cut your yard like all the time? And it just always looks like your yard is cut. And it's lovely that I get to have a fresh looking yard at all times. My neighbor might be watching this video. I don't know, he's picked up that I make YouTube videos. But anyways, he was pretty intrigued about Mimo because I could probably tell that he doesn't really like doing yard work. So this, again, is a really good setup for someone that wants to keep up the yard but not necessarily work on it all the time or hire someone else to do it. Being that Mimo runs every single day, we have to keep the yard clean and tidy, no kind of clutter around, no toys in the yard. So what we ended up doing was boxing out the trampoline area and that's where we can keep the toys, our hammock and things like that. Mimo will not go in that area. So as long as we keep the toys and stuff like that inside of there when we're done, my yard looks clean all the time. And it's actually a good way to have the kids pick up their toys and put it away because we don't want Mimo getting interfered with that kind of stuff. That's basically the top three things that I like about Mimo the most. There are definitely some other great features about this and I kind of want to segue into those things on the topic of kids. Now your concern might be that, you know, what if a kid goes next to Mimo and is it going to stop or is it going to stop operating? Is it going to cut them or hurt them? I would say that's probably my number one concern about Mimo is that yes, it does have this feature to where if it bumps up against something, it'll stop and turn the other way. It shuts off the blades, all that kind of stuff. But the thing is, is that kids, like their toes, even human toes, like I wouldn't even try to test this without shoes on, is that, you know, you could probably stick your toes up underneath that. And that's just my concern about that kind of stuff. So we had to definitely train our kids and get our kids in the mindset that you don't play around Mimo. You don't mess with it, you don't go around it. And they've been really good about that. There's been no incidences at all with my kids. However, I've got some neighbor kids that like to um, explore. We'll, we'll put it that way. And I had to get on to them a couple of times, like you kids are not allowed in my yard kind of thing because this could hurt you. And that's just my biggest concern about that kind of stuff. So as long as you educate the people around you that this could potentially hurt you, there's not really been an issue. So I just encourage you to do that kind of stuff if you do have kids or even friends around the neighborhood. So that kind of leads into another point is that if you pick up Mimo, it shuts off. Like it doesn't even work anymore. And you have to put in a pin code, a security code to get it operating again. If that fails, you have to take it to a dealer to unlock it. So at that stage, there's really no point in even stealing this thing because you can't even use it. You could steal it, sell it, whatever. You're not gonna be able to use it at all until you put that pin code in or take it to a dealer. And since it's registered to me, the dealer is going to know something's up and know that it's stolen if it's not coming from myself. Other great things about Mimo is that it's low maintenance. There's no gas, there's no parts to really have to worry about. When I was talking to the installer that came out to my house, he said he's had a unit for about five years and that was a test model, not even a full production model. And he's barely ever had to change out the blades. He's not had any kind of issues. The line that they put down is fine. Like that's really the only issue. He said 99% of the time, if there's anything that's wrong that why Mimo's not working is because of the line that got put down, maybe got cut somehow, lost connection or something like that. But I've not had any of those issues so far. So that's pretty exciting to know that I save on gas, I save on parts and things like that. So it's not only a time saver, it's a money saver as well. And speaking of the installer, he was extremely helpful, extremely nice, and very knowledgeable about the product. So when he was out here installing Mimo, he was educating me about Mimo, how to operate it, things to look out for. He'll walk around the yard saying, uh, this area might be of concern, like I've got squirrels that dig up my yard. It's so frustrating. And the reason why he points that stuff out is because Mimo might get stuck. There's only been one time that Mimo's gotten stuck, so that's pretty good odds. I did not take the advice from the installer and fill those places in with some sand. I'm probably gonna have to do that at this point because I'm actually looking over at it right now. It seems like it's gotten bigger. I gotta get that kind of stuff done. But other than that, like there's been no problems with it getting stuck anywhere else. And there's definitely areas that he mentioned that could be potential places to where it could get stuck and they haven't had that issue yet. So pretty cool stuff. The other neat thing that I like about the installation is that when you're going around the yard, like I was thinking, is it gonna dig up the yard? Is it gonna try to put a trench in and then cover it back up? 
with the line that goes down and that's not the case. All he does is go around and hammer in pegs and puts it into the ground. And what ends up happening is that over the summertime, once the grass is growing, is that the grass will grow over that line and you don't have it even visible. Now there's a few spots in my yards where the grass isn't the best uh, growing conditions. And so you do see some of that line. But other than that, like you don't really even notice that it's there. It's not an eye sore or anything like that. I do wanna say that my yard is a pretty good candidate for Mimo. There's not many obstacles in the way. There's not much things that's gonna interfere with Mimo. It's a pretty cookie cutter type yard to be able to have Mimo as part of our family now. There's just a few obstacles, like I've got a couple garden boxes, I've got a few trees, and all you do is what they call lollipop around it. And if you can kind of imagine the line, you just put two lines and then go around it, and that's what happens. So when two lines are next to each other, Mimo registers it as one line and actually goes over it. So that's just a pretty cool programming feature that it has. It doesn't go all the way around to the different line and stuff. All it does is to go right through it because the lines uh, communicate that way. So it's a pretty cool feature about that. So if you've got trees and things like that, it works out pretty well. As far as the line goes, he pretty much used up the entire spool. There's just a little bit left over. So if I need to repair a line, if I need to splice a couple things together, let's say the, the neighbor does something weird, like puts in a fence and fortunately this didn't happen, but we did have a neighbor put in a fence after the fact of having Mimo, but let's say the workers uh, were digging, they cut the line, you gotta be able to repair it. So you're able to do that kind of stuff. I have a little bit of line left over. So for my size yard, that's how much basically space that you have to work with with Mimo. You can just have it for certain areas of your yard that you just don't wanna cut and just always have maintained or you can have your entire yard like myself have that cut for you. I was talking to my buddy Michael about his experience with Mimo because he's got one as well. And I wanted to see if he had any kind of critical points about his experience with Mimo. And we're just kind of bouncing off each other with that kind of stuff because I was telling him, my experience has been so good, but I don't want her to sound so biased because I know that this was provided for review, but the experience has just really been that good. All right, so again, this has been a great experience. I definitely appreciate this being sent out to me. It's been a life changer for my family. It's been almost adopted as like a pet. We say like, where's Mimo? It's almost like a game. So you could kind of see how this could maybe uh, impact your life as well. Let me know what your thoughts are about Mimo down in the comments. I'm looking forward to hearing what you think about it. If you have any kind of concerns or questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate it. Also, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos when I do upload them. Follow me on social media so that way we can chat and hang out. And until then, I'll catch you guys later.